Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Factorio. It is episode number 5 now. And uh, in between this one and the last one, I haven't done too much in the world here. I've been doing a lot of research, reading up on stuff, looking at designs and things, and uh, just learning as much as I could about this game. So, what's happened in between episodes is, we've been attacked a considerable amount more. In fact, a lot of the times our gun turrets are starting to get blown up, which is not a good thing, and it means I'm spending a lot of time walking back and forth maintaining things. So, I've tried to reduce the amount of attacks we're receiving by uh, just lowering the amount of steam engines and uh, amount of electric mining drills as well. Um, so we're producing less pollution and that means we can quickly focus on getting to the laser turrets which is going to be our goal at the moment. Then after that we will move on to the science packs tier 4. And there you go down in the corner it's happening again something got blown up. So every time they attack down here I have to come and repair and rebuild a little bit which is not good for maintenance. But I'll take care of that um, in a second. I've got some feedback from the comments on the earlier videos now and I uh, just wanted to talk about that a little bit. In fact, it only take a second to pop these two down here. Obviously, that's not good that they're getting destroyed. But at the moment, that's what we're going to do. Just replace them until we can do something better. Um, so, one of the things you wanted to see was for me to do a little bit more problem solving on camera. I'm going to try to do that. The problem with me is when it comes to thinking, I really need to stop completely. And look at this one. It's run out. Um, of stuff to mine. So we'll get rid of that. I need to just, you know, completely think and often that means being silent and it takes me a little bit of time to think about stuff which I think would be um, a little bit boring. That track's going in the wrong way. Or is it even supposed to be there? I'm not sure what's going on here. I'll look at that in a second. Um, as well as that, I think you wanted me to press Alt and this displays more information. Actually, that's really cool. That just makes it so much easier to see what's going on because when I look at these machines, I have to look on what's either side um, to remember what it's making. So we're going to keep it like that. That means you can see more of what's going on. Something else got destroyed over on the left, so let's head over there and check that out. Um, yeah, it's not good getting uh, all of these things destroyed. We really need those lasers. And look at the mini-map. I've been waiting for that to appear. We can see the pollution we're producing when we press Alt. Oh, huh. Been waiting for the longest time to see that turn red, and that's why, because it's uh, an advanced thing. So it's a good thing we turned that on. By the way, my mouse cursor, you can see it now. I don't know if you guys uh, noticed, but in the last couple of episodes it wasn't there. There was a DX story ch setting that I accidentally changed, and uh, for that reason it didn't pick it up. And with this game I'm often pointing at stuff and talking about it. So that's back, which is cool. You've also all let me know that the ratio for boilers to steam engines is 10 boilers, to 14 steam engines so we're going to be redesigning this in the future possibly near future I don't know um, and then another thing is you can press R to rotate stuff I knew this but you can also do it with tracks as well so you can actually uh, rotate them like that which is pretty cool and it would appear that I also pick things up as well so I want to start remembering these uh, little shortcuts they're one of the things that I really do take a long time to pick up on but it's uh, better to try than not to try. So, um, another little thing I want to do around here as well, which I've had a look at, and to be honest, I think at some point we're going to redesign a lot of this. I see a lot of other setups where people only put one material on the track, so on both sides of it, um, you have all of the materials, and they use splitters to divide things up rather than smart inserters. So some of this stuff might change. You know, we can remove a few of the assembling machines on either side and make more room for it. Uh, but one of the things I'd like to do is actually add a buffer to the output. So what that would consist of is an inserter on one side, a chest, and then an inserter on the other side, and we can let that chest fill up. So for things like this, when all of a sudden they become in high demand, we've got a much larger buffer of uh, items in our system. Uh, but there you go. So now these two are going to produce while these two don't. So it's going to fill up slowly. But the thing is, this takes up free spaces. So the other place we could possibly put it is here. But then it's going to put them onto the wrong side of the track there. So yeah, because of that space limitation, that's the only place we're going to put it. So we might make a few more of those. Uh, but for now, we need to focus on making batteries and collecting um, oils and stuff like that. So down here, we have some crude oil. This can be harvested with, and I haven't even crafted this stuff, I really should have done that already. In fact, I think I will. I think I'd rather do a little bit of this on camera at least. So I've decided that I actually don't like this thing, because now it's taking all of the iron coming into our system, and really I'm starting to see uh, that maybe our system in places needs to redesigning a little bit. So let's take this back 
um, because otherwise all of the iron isn't going to make its way further down the line. So um, let's head down here and I've been doing some research learning about how all the oils work and uh, I've got a little diagram that I've made of the kind of tree of uh, the tech tree or something like that, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so we can put these down on top of those little oil spots and uh, we've got one of these for now, it's got an output as well and I do need more stuff really so I'm just going to plop these things down um, to show you. So with this right here we need to take the crude oil that's going to come out of here and put it into a refinery, oil refinery, this thing right here. So you can put this anywhere, it looks pretty big and um, let's just plop it down right there, it's not going to be doing anything. So these are the inputs on this side and then you have free outputs because crude oil will be turned into uh, petroleum gas, light oil and heavy oil and uh, this is going to be much better if I actually have all the things that I need because we could hook it up straight away with some pipes. Yeah, let's go grab some pipes. Okay, everything we're going to do here will be kind of temporary. I've got to think about where this stuff needs to go first. Um, so we're going to have an oil refinery, so we've got two inputs for that. We'll put one right there. That's not powered. So let's give it a little bit of power. And then it's going to create um, some outputs. You can see here, it tells you there's crude oil in the pipe. So we know that's going into this thing. Um, so now what we need is some outputs. And we're going to set up some very temporary uh, storage for these as well. So let's just bring them out like this. And we should be able to see what's in each pipe. At the moment, there's nothing. Do we have to select? There you go, basic oil processing. So there's those three things I said. And with different types of oil processing, you will create different outputs in different quantities, etc. And I think you might need multiple inputs as well. That's why there's two over here. Um, so you can now see what's in the pipe. Is that because we press? Oh, yes, it is. OK, that's useful to know. And what we need are these things, storage tanks. So there's uh, an efficient way to arrange these. I'm not sure what that is 100%. There you go. I think it connects when it's like that. Um, so we'll put three of these down. And once again, very temporary. And I've managed to trap myself inside of this thing. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, let's go out to the other side. Plop that down like that. Um, so now we have these three things. Now the light oil and the heavy oil don't seem to be so useful early on. So we're probably going to have a large storage area for these. And look at this. We are getting attacked again. Oh, it is crazy. And loud. Uh, let's do a little bit of repairing while we're down here. These things really need it. In fact, the reason I think these things are getting destroyed is because each attack is doing a lot of damage. It's not like each wave they destroy one. It's just over time. And that means that I've got to keep coming back over here and repairing stuff, which is not good. Let's put down uh, some more turrets. Uh, in fact, that's the only one that got destroyed on that side. There we go. So things look okay there. And something's been destroyed on the other side. Yep. We need to hurry up with all of this stuff because these aliens are getting stronger. Okay, so trying to explain stuff here. Um, these two become a little bit more useful later on, it looks like. Heavy oil can be turned into lubricant, which we need to make um, the third tier of the, uh, the belts. And then this stuff right here, petroleum gas, if we mix that with coal in one of these things, a chemical plant, and I really don't have this set up, but you would put coal in on one side, you know, you can have an inserter drop it in and then a pipe going in on the other one. And then your output would be plastic bars, which are needed for, <laughs> uh, let's have a look, these things right here. Uh, so then we'll be able to make those. And I don't think they're needed for batteries, which is what we're going to focus on next because we need the batteries um, for our laser turrets, which is going to be real important. So that's one of the things we need to make. The other one would be to use the water, uh, sorry, the petroleum gas with water in one of these, and then we'll be able to turn it into sulfur. So we would have some water somewhere pumping into one side, petroleum into the other, and that would create sulfur. And that then goes into, I think, another one of these, and you mix it with water and iron, and it creates sulfuric acid. And then sulfuric acid, iron, and copper is what makes our battery. Uh, where's the battery? I've lost it. There we go. And then we can make our lasers. So we're going to focus on that one first of all. And now what I've got to do is think about where we're going to store all this stuff, how we're going to pump it out of the ground, you know, how we're going to bring it up here to be a part of this uh, assembly machine as well. So what I actually want to do next is create another little assembly, al assembly a line going up here with a few um, assembly machines just to make pipes because I think we're going to end up using a lot of them and uh, we want to use a lot of the underground ones as well which are actually quite expensive because it's 5 iron and 10 pipes as well so you already need those crafted so we're going to set that up over here and then we'll be able to work on this so recording on camera it really isn't a good idea I think I've just spent about 25 minutes doing all of this 
and obviously we want to make some progress in the episode. So over here you can see uh, we've got some assembling machines for the pipes. The one at the top here simply goes into this chest but it also goes up to this one as well. So in this chest right here we have 50 of each. When I take them out I must remember to leave one in there um, so it works you know to store both of them. So we have our little buffer for those for us to pick up and then down here we have um, yeah, all of the pipes going onto a line because I'm pretty sure they get crafted in other stuff. So let's take these because we're going to need them. Took me a while to figure out how to do this and it's probably not going to be the most efficient thing. But what we want to do is separate each of the outputs. And I hope I got this the right way around because they're going to lead into these storage tanks and the other one is going to go off in this direction. So what we need to do right now is actually lead the input which is something that I have kind of overlooked a little bit. So up the top here what we want to do is have... Uh, I guess one pipe for each really, there's not too much of a need to have lots of pipes so we can put that like that and then that one can go underground over to around there let's say, I think that'll work and actually we want it to line up with that so let's put it right there, undo that, let's see how far this thing can go across, can it go all the way, that's great <laughs> uh, and then it can come down, how far down does it go, well that's brilliant it goes all the way down there, okay so now we're sending the stuff up there into the input, so let's give this thing some power. Does that connect? Does that connect? No. <laughs> I think that powers them. Yes, it does. Okay, so where are the outputs? What are they going to be? Um, is this thing working? We have to select the mode, and it looks like I got it completely wrong. The petroleum is going to go to the wrong place. Okay, so um, you can see what we're doing here is we're using the underground pipes to put the pipes adjacent to one another without them connecting together. Um, so what we need to do, I think is this one's going to go down, that's great, that's going to go all the way across there. It hasn't made its way across just yet, I'm not sure how these work. Oh, there you go, it's just not displaying it there for some reason. It's going straight through to this side. So we've got the right material in there, now we need to get this one in. This should actually be quite painless because we can go across to that side and then remove that little bit. And so now what we do need to do is take this pipe out of here and we're going to take it out on this side and then we're going to take it upwards, like so. Uh, there we go. So what else is petroleum used for? It's used for making plastic as well. So we're going to need this to go to two different production lines. And this production line will probably start somewhere around here. And I think I have enough of the next bits for this. There we go, four of them. So we could probably dedicate two to, um, to is it sulfuric acid? I think we have to make sulfur first. I am kind of forgetting the tech tree. I've got it all written down, but it is a little bit... Um, confusing. So what we'll do is we'll have that go off to the side and we'll put this somewhere over here because there's space and all of that. So one, two over here and we'll simply put an underground pipe leading all the way across to one input and if this is for sulfur we need to get water here and uh, iron as well. That's going to be a little bit tricky. I can see some iron we can grab from over there. It's going to be a bit makeshift. We're also going to need to have a water pipe in here so I think the smart thing to do is to get... Where are the pipes? Uh, inventory management on this game. I am terrible at it. I don't know why, but I just can't seem to keep the right things in the right place on the hotbar. So both of those are being used. And uh, there's a lot of attacking going on. I'm having to ignore it, really, so we can focus on this. Um, so then what we need is a pipe there and there. And how are we going to... No, not that one. <laughs> how are we going to connect them up? This is interesting because there's no space here. So it'd have to go maybe from above? Really not sure. Oh, it's connected to that one as well. Oh dear, that's silly. Okay, so these need to be a little bit further away, really. Okay, figured it out eventually. We now got water going down one, and then because of the underground pipe, it doesn't connect with that, which is pretty cool. Goes across here to the offshore pump. And a moment ago, what I did is I just placed down pipes going all the way across like this, which is bad. We want to use these underground pipes as much as possible because um, you can't sort of walk through them. They'll actually block off your path completely. Uh, let's get power to this thing over here as well. Can we connect? Yep, there we go. Now we're connecting all of that together. And uh, we've got to get some iron, is it, into this thing, and then we'll be making sulfuric acid. And a moment ago, I developed the just strangest habit out of nowhere. And whenever something was in my way, I just started pressing space to kind of dodge it. And of course, space is uh, shooting your shotgun, which is bad, and I was destroying 
our own buildings and I did it quite a few times it was quite embarrassing <laughs> and silly but yeah this episode is really drawing on actually I do talk a lot don't I and I wanted to get um, laser turrets down for this episode and we're getting close so I'm going to continue building stuff and I think it'd be better if I show you it once it's done because it took a while to do that uh, but there you go the system is probably not the most optimal but it can be expanded which is important we can extend these over to this side you know might have to rearrange a couple of these um, but that's a good thing when I started this series I uh, pictured things going a lot smoother and if we just zoom out here we do have quite a lot of space around here but I don't think I've just put things in the best of positions because as you can see it's a little bit of a squeeze over here but we will learn things as we go along and so now what we have is the sulphur being made here it's being dropped onto the end of this transport belt we siphoned off some iron from over here and some water from this pump is now going into the next stage which is the chemical plant so we're going to take this stuff out of here and once again this is a gas I don't think it's an item and we're going to put that into another chemical plant with copper and iron and then that's going to create uh, what is it batteries yes so what we'll probably have is this thing sort of facing across like two of them like this then we'll cipher our our iron and our copper off of here that'll turn down and come down this way we'll probably use a splitter for that so we have it on both sides of the track and then we'll bring in some water from this pipe as well no not water sorry sulfuric acid from this output and then we'll have batteries which will then go straight back onto the line that's probably the way I'm going to do it and I'm pretty sure there was something else I was going to mention yes uh, these storage tanks I think we should have a couple of them for the petroleum and for maybe the sulfuric acid as well but we don't really have the space to do that at the moment so I'm not going to do that straight away but that was a little thought that I had Okay, initially I didn't notice this, but if you have a look here, the inputs are actually pre-designated. So, that means we're going to have to probably move this over by one, rearrange these pipes a little bit. I'll figure out that in a moment. But things are going well here. We're producing batteries, as you can see this goes around the corner. It's a tight squeeze, but if you look um, over here, you can see that the batteries line up against the steel and the electric circuits. Now what do we need for this? We need steel, electric circuits and batteries. That's amazing. That means we can just shift them straight up here and uh, they're in the correct position. So all these things need now is power and then we're producing lasers which is awesome. So uh, let's put one there, another one over there. This place could probably do with a light so it's nice and bright at night and that rhymed. <laughs> uh, there we go. I'm a poet and I don't know it. Right. That is awesome. Yes, I had another idea as well. Check this out. We should probably use smart inserters for these ones. Uh, again, I get those two muddled up. Fast inserters. Just because the ones on this pipe are needed in large quantities. And that means it can make these faster. That does put more demand on our system. But now we are producing laser turrets. Let's actually pick a few of these up and place them down. We're going to leave them uh, and let them do their thing for a moment. I think there was something else that I wanted to mention. Yes. Look at how much iron we got backed up here. Do you remember that idea that I had earlier in the episode that I scrapped? I did some editing, didn't really like it. When it's like this, this is actually a good time to add a buffer because then you can just craft tons and tons of iron cogs. Then later on, when all of a sudden something's in demand, there's a lot of it backed up. So I think I'm actually going to go ahead with that idea and just do it when we're backed up like this. You know, copper would be a really good one to do because there's just so much of it we could create a large buffer of it in reserve, which I think is actually going to be a cool idea. And I think our system is kind of limited and it's going to help with that. So even though it's not the best system, it's going to improve the one that we got. Anyway, I'm waffling on. Let's grab some lasers over here. We've got 18 of these. There are a few spots around here that get hit up a lot. So I'm going to put them down. And uh, then we're going to see how the bad guys react to them. And this is actually going to take a little bit of time. You can see these ones over here have been hurt a lot. So uh, what we'll do, I guess, is I'll do all of this off camera. And then we'll wait for some aliens to attack. Oh, look at this. I wasn't even paying attention to this area because I wanted to crack on with all the stuff that we've been doing. And all of our gun turrets down here have been destroyed. I'm going to move these forward a little bit so we can have these guys right at the edge. But one thing you'll notice is you can fit two of them together for every one of the larger gun turrets. So uh, these things haven't been upgraded as well yet. If we press T, you can see there's still some research to be done. In fact, we're going to start doing that now because we're using these. So let's upgrade the, uh, the shooting speed first of all. So much time has gone by during this episode that uh, we've mined up a ton of iron down the bottom. You can just about see it down there. We've mined up most of this stone. There's a tiny bit left. And we've mined up a lot of the coal up the top as well. And now as a result of all of that, we're kind of using less power overall. The aliens aren't attacking as much and I've been waiting around to capture it. And one of the things that happen is the base starts blinking in the dark because all the lights go off. You know, all the power gets consumed by the laser turrets. So next episode, it looks like the focus will be 
um, on these steam engines over here and perhaps providing some sort of uh, backup for the power because there are power accumulators there we go and now we can craft them because we've got batteries as well that's great so that's probably a project we're going to do in the next one and uh, I do believe there's one other thing that I was going to mention ah yes I remember if we click on here and uh, just go back to 10 minutes you can see when the aliens attack there's this big spike like this and then this is me going around and clearing up all of those unused mining drills so it looks like they actually consume power when they're idle which is good to know should probably do a proper test to find out but it certainly did appear that way but it's going to be it for this episode of factorio if you have enjoyed it please do leave a like you know it is always appreciated so as always thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you next time